Hey guys, welcome to the seventh video of the audio classification series. I wasn't planning on making any more videos in this series, but um, over time, enough people have commented saying, hey, how do I uh, use the model that we've been building and make predictions on new audio data? Um, and so that's what we're gonna be doing in these next two videos, okay? So let's just get into it. Uh, we need three new imports. We're gonna say uh, import pickle. And pickles in Python just let you store binary files. I'm gonna say from callbacks import model checkpoint. Uh, this is how we'll actually be saving our model from Keras so that we can load it up later and make predictions. And we're gonna be making a new file called CFG. And within this file, all it's gonna do is contain our config class that we created earlier, okay? Um, so let's actually go ahead and do that right now. What you should have is a directory that looks something like this. We're gonna add three new things in here. We're gonna make a models directory and we will make a pickles directory. Okay, so the general idea here is that every single time we call build random features, it has to rebuild and recalculate all the data for training and then it starts modeling it. So if you want to run model.py again, it's going to recalculate it and it's a big time waste. So what we can do is we can store all of our data in a pickle and then we can call it up if it's already been built before, okay? Um, oh, and let's also, let's make our config file. So just make a new file, uh, I'm going to call it cfg.py. And what we'll do is we'll go into model.py grab our config class that we made from before and just copy and paste it into cfg.py, okay? Let me zoom in on this. And there's gonna be two new lines in this file, okay? Uh, the first one's gonna be self.modelpath. So model path is just gonna be the path in our file system of where to store our models. So we're gonna do ospath.join models and we're going to do the way i named it is i just called the model named after the mode that i created it in so it's mode plus the file extension which is going to be dot model and now we're going to do self dot p path uh, so this is going to be the path to the pickle file that we're going to create we're going to say os dot path dot join of uh, pickles and we'll say mode plus dot p. So typically, I mean, you can use whatever extension you want, but normally you use the dot p extension for pickles. And don't forget to import os. So we should be good to go. Um, now let's head back to model.py. There are a couple of small changes or like refactoring changes that I need to make here. Um, so let's go up uh, to build random features. I realized that the transpose that I was doing when I write here was useless. So for some reason in my head when I was doing this originally, I thought, okay, well the convolutional model or the convolutional data has to be shaped just like this. So I did this weird line right here where I like transposed or chose not to transpose. What I wanna do is get rid of the transpose, um, completely delete this line and say, x sample equals, um, what do I wanna make it equal to? Oh, x, x dot append x sample. So we're gonna say x dot append x sample. So no more weird transposing stuff. That's a lot cleaner. Um, the other thing we want to do is when it comes time to run prediction on new audio files, we want to have access to the minimum and maximum that we calculated during training because in machine learning, technically you would say that my training data set was representative of the population. So I already have the min and max to scale it from, and I just want to, you know, I don't need to recalculate the min and max for the validation set. I've already done it for training and that's just what it is because the training represents the population. So 
we'll say config.min equals min and config.max equals max, okay? So that looks good. Let's now build a another function and I'm gonna call it def check data. So this function is going to look at our uh, in our pickles folder and it's gonna see if there's an existing file in there. So we're gonna say if os.path.isfile, we're gonna check config.ppath. This is kind of weird that technically config is gonna be a global variable here. You, normally don't want to do that but just go with it I guess um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check uh, the path for the pickle file and if we find anything we're gonna say something like uh, loading existing data for and this is gonna be string formatting so for this model and so we're gonna say end that string and then do a did I end that? okay dot format and we want to format config.model, or sorry, config.mode. So, hey, I found uh, some existing data here that we've calculated before. Let's just go ahead and load that uh, for this mode, right? And then we're gonna say with open of config.ppath, uh, we are going to read bytes. So, RB is gonna stand for read bytes uh, of this file. And we're gonna load this as handle. And then we can say TMP for like a temporary file is just equal to uh, pickle.load our handle. Okay, so that's how you load a pickle file. Uh, and then we could just return TMP. And now, so if that file doesn't exist, we just wanna say else return none, all right? Um, so let's actually implement this in our build random feature. So we're just going to come down here and add a new line. And we're going to say TMP equals um, check data. And now remember, in Python, if a variable exists or there's anything in it, if you do something like if TMP, that will evaluate to true, whereas none automatically evaluates to Boolean false or zero, right? So if there's actually something that we found and it's not returning none, I want to return uh, temp.data. And what we're gonna be doing here is returning a tuple and we want the, the first part of the tuple and then we'll return the second part of the tuple. So it'll be tmp.data of zero, tmp.data of one. Um, we haven't actually created this yet, so just bear with me here. Um, so now that we have this, let's actually create the data attribute. So we're gonna come down here a little bit and let me make sure that I get this. So once we've created all of our data, cause all of this function wants to do is just generate whatever the data is to be served up to the model. So we're gonna say like config.data is equal to a tuple where we've got x and y. So that's what we're referencing here. It's the exact same thing, we're returning x and y. Well, guess what? I just wanna return the tuple um, from the calculated pickle file, all right? So that's how you would actually store it. Uh, and once you store the data within config, we can save the entire uh, object of config in a pickle. So this is gonna be the same thing or very similar to what we did before. We're gonna say, config.ppath and we're gonna use write bytes to store it as handle. And you're gonna say uh, what's called pickle.dump. So we're gonna do dump uh, config. So the whole object config, uh, we wanna dump handle, which is gonna be the bytes that we wanna write. And there's also another thing called protocol. Now, a lot of times people will set protocol to something like pickle dot um, highest protocol, which in Python 3.6, that is four. Here's the thing. Um, I'm gonna be using protocol two. It doesn't really matter because whenever like Python goes to load a pickle file, it'll automatically detect the protocol. But if you want this to be backwards compatible with Python two, then you would set protocol equal to two, okay? Um, because 
pickle.highest protocol will change based on like what version of Python you're running in, right? So just run protocol equals two, or you can use highest protocol, it doesn't really matter much. Um, so now that should store our pickle file. Let me see, I think we're ready to go down to set up a model checkpoint. So let's scroll to the bottom here and we'll start by creating a checkpoint right here. So we're gonna create a checkpoint object. We're gonna say, hey, I want us to create with the class model checkpoint and I'm gonna create config.modelpack. What do I wanna monitor? I wanna monitor the validation accuracy. So we actually have four metrics that we're gonna be recording here. Um, it's gonna be training, I guess, accuracy. I'm pretty sure it's just called accuracy. And then we have validation accuracy, and then we have loss, and then we have validation loss. So uh, we're actually gonna be adding a validation split to the data for those who wanna know how to do that. Uh, we can also say verbose is equal to one. Let me make this a lot bigger actually. And we'll set mode equal to max. Um, so the mode is like, hey, if this was loss, you would set the mode to minimum because you want the smallest loss from the model. And then we wanna say uh, save best only equals to true. So we'll only save a model if it's a true improvement from our classification. And then we're gonna say save weights only. So when you save models in Keras, it will be looking for a weight file. And well, in the old days, it used to be that, hey, I'm looking for a model architecture and I'm looking for weights to supply to that architecture. And typically this would be, uh, the architecture would go into a YAML file or a JSON file and the weights would go into an H5 file. Um, we can store all of this in one dot model file, which is what we'll be doing. So we want to say uh, save weights only to false. And the period is going to just equal to one. So that's every epoch, right? Um, so at this point, let's go down to small change to model.fit. Uh, when you call model.fit and you want to create this argument called validation split, you could create a validation data. But the easiest way to do this would be create a validation split. And we're going to say uh, the way this works, and some people mess this up, is we would have our whole matrix X. And validation split of 0.1 would mean that, hey, I'm going to take the bottom 10% of this matrix and serve it up for validation. So a lot of times people don't shuffle their X matrix. And then when they go to like, check the validation metrics, they're getting a model that is looking like it's learning, but then its validation is terrible. And a lot of the times, because they did not shuffle before they put the data, but the good thing is that when I build it, I did shuffle. So just so in the future, you wanna make sure that you shuffle your, your data before you call the validation split. Okay, guys. And now we can put a callback. So we're gonna say callbacks equals checkpoint and so that's just going to take our checkpoint object that we created before and now we can do a model.save and we're going to save config.modelpath and so we already set that up so we know exactly where to save our model after it's been training okay um, and that should be good now I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to go ahead and run both the uh, the convolution model and the recurrent neural network model and I'll just see if that works and make sure that all the code I just wrote will work for you guys, okay? All right, so really quickly, um, I just ran the first pass of the model. So what happened is it, you can see that it, the little TQDM bar, it built out the data, started fitting the model. And uh, it's actually, so if you look at your models directory, you can see that conf.model has been saved. Uh, and in your pickles directory, you have conf.p. So that's the pickle file that contains the object uh, config, right? And let's actually just go ahead and run. So now that that pickle file exists, see how it printed load existing data for conf model? We don't have to rebuild it every single time. So this is a little faster. So if you guys want to mess around with different 
um, architectures and change some stuff in the modeling stage, this is probably the fastest way to do it. Um, oh, and so let's talk a little bit about how it generates some of this stuff. So now that we're monitoring a validation split, we get this new metric called validation loss. So you can see it here. And uh, its monitor was set to one, remember? So every epoch, uh, it will check if, and see if validation accuracy is improved for the model. So if it does, it will save a new model in models. Uh, I guess models conf model, right? And eventually it'll reach the end and say, what do we get up to? It's like 96%. Now this is not true validation because normally you'd set validation completely separate. But because our data size is so small, uh, I guess you could, you could have it be more representative um, by reducing this two to like a one. Uh, although it was still random, uh, typically in machine learning, you'll have like, uh, you might have a 500,000 files and then you do a 90-10 train validation split where uh, I guess 50,000 of those like images, uh, the model has never been trained on before, it's never seen before. Now, uh, that would be a good thing to try, but normally when you have like really small data sets, you do something called cross-validation, but that's I can make a whole video series just on cross-validation, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, so now let's move into uh, the next video where we'll make predictions on our audio files, okay?